IPS versus TN, the comparison. All you need to know about which is best for you. Check out our website at techteamgb.co.uk for more info on both this and many other products, and also up-to-date news on all things tech. Stick around for this awesome video. Hi guys, and welcome to Tech Team GB. Now today is going to sort of follow on in our comparison series of videos. We first, um, the first comparison by the way, click it here if you want to watch that, is the 140Hz versus 60Hz video. I didn't really find anyone who could do anything like this before, so um, yeah, I'm really proud of this one, and uh, yeah, please do check it out. Now, uh, this video is actually going to be a comparison between the uh, TN and IPS monitors uh, in general, but the ones we're going to be using is a Hanji 21 inch and a uh, Iliama 23 inch. Now, um, the reason you're using a 23 inch is because this is bezel-less and looks awesome and effectively ends up at the same height. Both of them are 1080p and um, we're going to be checking out both uh, in sort of two ways actually. One is how the pixels are created and the other one is going to be um, you know, the end user benefit, so what you will see at the end of the day when you buy one of these monitors, or both, whichever you want. Now, I'm going to start off with the uh, how the pixels are created. So um, here's basically a sort of history into the pixels and uh, yeah, the, uh, the, the way they work. So before we can understand how you know the the, the uh, TN and IPS panels work, we first need to understand how LCD or liquid crystal displays work. So in each pixel, they're made up of three of these sort of setups. So first off, you have the light source, and then you have um, effectively a set of uh, two polarizing filters, one at the front and one at the back, or vice versa, and then a uh, liquid crystal in the middle with two electrodes. You also actually, in this diagram, isn't shown here uh, on this circuits today, uh, article is um, another filter on the end to change the colour intensity. Now all this in the back here is actually just for changing the intensity or the brightness uh, of the light that shines through this, um, this sort of pixel. Now, um, the, the way that this effectively works in uh, this diagram and in uh, TN, or Twisted Pneumatic Field Effects, is that the light comes in in one direction, so as you can see these lights, are, uh, these lines are specifically pointing downwards this way, and as you can see by these blue arrows, the, the light comes in and then is rotated, uh, or it only let, is let in in one way, and then in this liquid crystal layer, the light is actually physically twisted round so that it fits through the next filter. Filter. This is a very sort of um, general and actually old way of doing things. With, as I said, Twisted Pneumatic, um, just to show you the Wikipedia article here, um, the difference is that uh, you'll get light coming in, and then when, uh, when the pixel is on effectively, the uh, light is rotated physically as you can see here versus it being very random and not being let through. Also this eye layer here uh, is what I was talking about with the intensity of colour for R, G or B. Also by the way um, just to make up one pixel you will need three of these. Uh, one for red, one for green, one for blue. Now with IPS, um, it was actually, funnily enough, designed um, to solve the main limitations of TN in the late 1980s, which uh, include uh, strong dependence on viewing angles and low quality, uh, low color quality reproduction. Now there's lots of different um, sort of ways of doing IPS in different companies who made them, but the rough idea is that, or the, the difference is that instead of having to rotate the lights, the light is let in f straight through. So uh, effectively, when the uh, pixel off the lights just diminished but when the pixel comes through it is let, let in perfectly straight uh, and it doesn't need to be rotated. This um, effectively as an advantage allows for better colour reproduction as it doesn't have to go through a tinted crystal or anything um, and also that you know the um, uh, viewing angles are increased as well by the fact that it doesn't have to be rotated. Also through this um, super IPS panel um, you can see that these chevron design pixels mean that you can have better sort of, of a viewing cone to be able to see the, the right colour at the right place. Also um, the sort of disadvantages for this which we'll talk about more in a second but um, IPS, pan IPS panels apparently require more power, they are also more expensive to produce and do generally speaking have higher response time. So to take a look at how our IPS monitor works, I just want to show you the pixels themselves. So as you can see, they're very clearly delineated pixels and it's nice to see the RGB. But in comparison with the TN, you can see the TN monitor actually has a bit of light leak in between pixels, which means the main benefit of viewing angles is sort of benefited um, by the fact that each pixel is very separated. So now you know how they work, yeah, we're going to check out the uh, sort of end user benefits. So the first one is going to be the response time. 
Now, as uh, I explained before, the um, the, the pixel uh, takes longer uh, in a uh, IPS um, sort of panel to be able to actually process the image. The response time, by the way, is the time it takes for the image, once the image has hit the input port, so the DVI, HDMI, and once it's hit that port to be then transferred onto the screen. So the time it takes for it to be effectively processed onto the screen. So that time on IPS monitors, one of the best monitors you'll probably get for IPS and um, for the response time that is, is probably around five milliseconds. Now, <clears throat> my personal opinion on this is that even though you can get one millisecond response time monitors for TN, um, I've never seen a difference. I've got some. I've got a couple two millisecond. I've got a couple five and a couple eight, and I don't see a difference between either of them um, or any of them actually while um, while using them. Obviously, uh, if you're a pro gamer or something, then you'll probably go for more the TN option just just for the the millisecond response time. But if you're a general user or just you know game regularly but aren't that super interested or you know your picks are watching or something or other, then um, you know IPS is still going to be fine for you. Now, uh, as I said, uh, you can get one millisecond for TN, whereas you're going to be looking at more sort of five to eight for uh, IPS. There's two other main benefits to IPS. One is refresh rate, so you can generally speaking get higher refresh rate monitors for TN uh, other than uh, IP IPS. But um, the main one we're going to be looking at is actually the viewing angles. So because of the way um, the uh, pixels, as I said earlier, are made, the uh, pixels are very individual and are able to shine light in a better sort of angle. So if you can see the monitor on the right there, the viewing angle is actually pretty bad this corner. Also from the top, the, the color reproduction just isn't the same. Um, and uh, yeah, basically, the, the the as I said, the way the pixel is created means that the color accuracy, uh, as well as on you know the viewing angles, but just straight on as well, the color accuracy is better. So if you're looking for a pro arts monitor or anything, you know, from ASUS or anything that you need to work with the color, an IPS panel is probably the one you're going to look at. So as I said, that that is the main benefit. If you're looking for color accuracy, if you're looking for great viewing angles, if it, if it's something like you know a, a media screen that you just want to hang in a wall and you don't mind you don't want to know you know don't want to sort of look at where it's coming from then uh, you know that an IPS panel is probably the one you want to look at if you want to do some heavy uh, high-end gaming then TN is probably better for you as you can get a higher refresh rate and uh, lower uh, latency but um, other than that there besides the actual physical pixel difference the end user difference isn't overly drastic it just depends on what you want out of a monitor so as I said if you want you know color accuracy and and uh, you know great viewing angles then the IPS is definitely for you but if you want more gaming oriented fast awesome um, you know sort of refresh rate monitors then TN is probably the one for you now if you've got any questions feel free to leave them in the comments down below if you have uh, you know if you want to see more detail on anything like this um, check out our website we're going to do a full written article on this as well so as I said check it out I'm going to click uh, sort of here somewhere and uh, yeah click that other than that, um, you know, thanks to Yoyo Tech to uh, providing this screen and also the 2560 by 1440 screen we've got uh, literally over there that we'll be checking out uh, in just a minute. So um, yeah, thanks to those guys. And other than that, um, yeah, as I said, like if you like it, dislike if you dislike it. Please subscribe if you haven't already. Um, you know, it, it helps us out a lot. And obviously, if you enjoy these type of videos, if you enjoy the comparisons, we're going to be doing some Linux tutorials very soon. Um, and other than that, we we do lots of reviews as well for for things like monitors. Um, you know, for for laptops, for just all sorts of stuff. So, um, you know, please do subscribe. Uh, as I said, like if you like it, just leave a dislike it. Leave a comment down below. Let us know what you thought of the video. Um, if you got any questions and all that sort of stuff. Other than that, uh, yeah, we'll see you all in the next video.